All right, guys, welcome back to another video. It's your man, Jay. It's time to talk about the device that gets probably, is gonna probably be the one that people tell you not to buy, which I don't understand that logic, but you know, I, I know why some people might say that, but I disagree with the, that logic. So this is the Galaxy S23 Plus, the middle size, the 6.6 .6 inch display, just nicely uniformed. This is just, a phenomenal, phenomenal put together piece of hardware. 6.6 .6 inches, 120 hertz, HDR10 plus. It's it's all there. 4,700 milliamp hour battery, 50 megapixel shooter. Mind you, it takes the same quality footage as the Ultra. You're just missing a couple of lenses there, so don't let that deter you. But you also get a better feel in hand. Now let me bring the Ultra over here. The Ultra is bigger. This is now this is the difference between a boxy device coming in at 6.8 versus a rounded corner style device coming in at 6.6. .6. Folks, that is not a lot of difference in screen, but when you square it off, you get much more screen, but you also have to have a bigger, more wieldy device. And it's, it's just gonna be bigger. And you know, just it's just gonna be boxier when you do it that way. And that has always been my complaint when it comes to the Ultra was just the boxiness in the corners. And so you take a device like the 14 Plus, which is just a great size, it's rounded off, but even it's a little bigger in its footprint than the Galaxy S23 Plus, 6.6, 6.7, but again, you have that wider, boxier frame. So the, close, the closest one in competing, I would say as far as that feels better, is gonna be the OnePlus 11. The OnePlus 11 is narrower, has a, a curved corners on the back, which just floats in your hand. The, the 10 and the 11 have got to be the best feeling phones on the market right now, in my humble opinion. As far as smartphones feel in hand, the 11, uh, and I said the 10 and the 11 because the 11 is a new one and I still have the 10 over there, but that style of device has got to be the best feeling. When it comes to the hardware though, I wish these sides were flat or you know more flat and it would probably have a sharper feel in the hand, but they've rounded it off, I guess, for that reason. Um, it definitely feels great in the hand. This is just like almost the perfect size for a big device uh, because 6.6 .6 inches on the screen is not small by any means. Uh, it is a lot of screen. Now this has a really decent resolution at 392 for the pixels per inch. Really good. This is a, a AMOLED display, dynamic AMOLED display, 120 hertz, like I said. Peak brightness on all the new um, Samsung devices are 1750. And then you can regularly float along at about 1200 nits if you need to for brightness. Uh, but, you know, this is a 512 gig version of this device. It only comes in 256 and 512. And the reason this is a win over the smaller variant is because the smaller variant, it goes, it only, it tops out at 256. Uh, and then also you don't get the UFS 4.0 on the transfer for your, for your transfers, for your, um, for your read and write. You get 3.1, I believe it is. This is 4.0 if you go with the, with the S23 Plus or the Ultra. Now that's more aligned for people who do a lot of transfers and you're moving things off of the device, but you get the faster internal SSD basically on this one. So, but you have the option for a 512 on the Plus and you have the option for my, my Ultras, you can get 512s, one terabyte or 256. So they're giving you a, a really nice option here, giving you 512 gigs on the storage if you need it. Again, camera wise, it shoots 8K at 30 frames per second, just like the Ultra. You know, the, this is one thing I like about the Samsung products. They all got that same um, ability to record at a beautiful, beautiful resolution. You can do 4K on the front, 4K 60, something again that the OnePlus is, is just lacking. I don't know why they did that to us, giving us, you know, not being able to do, um, not even able to do 4K on the front. It's just stupid when it has the, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. I don't understand why they would do that, but they did it. And to me, that's a downfall of the OnePlus. Um, furthermore, the OnePlus's cameras don't compete with these S23 Pluses. That's just what it is. But more, let's stick on this device. You do have eight gigs of RAM, but you have the uh, RAM Plus. Um, you've got that in here. You got the, the extra RAM that you can boost it. You got the RAM Plus. So you've got 
what you need to have your device flowing right along. Let me clear out these notifications. They are just going to keep coming in. Um, you've got what you need on the speed you need on your device to make it go fast and, and get you through the day. There's going to be a time, though, where some people might say, well, you should have got the Ultra because you, you, need, you have pen access. And I say, you know, pen access is fine and everything, but there are third-party pens that you can get for this device to work. So pen support now also, uh, and I want to talk about this because tons of people talk about the Ultra having the pen support uh, and the other phones don't. A lot of people I've found don't even use their pen. They do not use their pen and they have the Note lineup. They just wanted the biggest screen that Samsung could offer that they could get at the time. So I found that, you know, everybody has a purpose and a reason behind what they're buying, but I wouldn't buy the Ultra and not use the pen. I, I, I personally wouldn't do it, but you do what you need to do, but I wouldn't buy the Ultra and not, not use the pen. So using this device over the last couple days, I want to show you the battery. It's fairly good too. It's um, I've been it's been uh, da, 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 day and a half, over a day and a half, and I've got three hours of screen on time with thirty two percent left. Now I don't measure so much screen on time, but I like to show this to people because they really want to see this. So the last time I've charged it was almost two days ago, uh, and because um, I charged it when I got it out of the box, I, I when you know do the initial setup and everything, and then uh, you know I had to I charge it one more time to get it back to a hundred. So the the initial thoughts on this is that i'll be able to go at least two to three days minimum because that is how i rate my phones i go on the time that i'm off the charger i don't need a phone that's gonna give me 15 hours of screen on time but i need to charge at 16 hours you know what i mean like that that's not i'm just sitting on the phone all day doing this okay yeah you'll get 17 hours of screen on time but you're gonna have to charge it right then. So how long your phone stays off the charger is to me what's important. Now this phone is for sure uh, a, a phone that a, a person might compare to the Ultra. I don't know why people would do that, but when you start to compare next to the Ultra, the only thing this is missing from the Ultra is the, the, the extra camera as far as I can see it. You know, okay, it's not a quad HD display, but do you actually need a quad HD display? Some people also are going to look at the price and say, well, the Ultra is $200 more. You should have gotten that. Well, what if a person doesn't have the $200 or doesn't want to spend the $200 and they don't want the bigger, boxier, more wieldy device? You got to think about these things while you're online saying, skip it, don't buy it. This is irrelevant. Tons of videos like that missed the mark on this one. You don't even understand, I think, who this is for, just like people didn't understand who the 14 Plus was for. They instantly wrote it off thinking it was a horrible device. And it is, in fact, a phenomenal device. And that is how I feel about this device after a few days. It is great. It is a The hardware is on point. The cameras are on point. Same quality I get from the Ultra. Battery life is only 300 milliamps difference, but I don't have a quality sheet display, so that offsets it. So I'm getting the same, if not better, battery life on this device. And real briefly, I'm working on a battery life video for the Ultra, but the remember the loaner unit that I got from the for the S22 23 Ultra? That was one that I guess I don't know if it was like an international to be sold internationally cuz most of the phones I get from wireless place um they're international models. And I said the battery wasn't that good on it. I was getting like five and a half, six hour, half hours tops. Well, on this new one that I bought directly from from my Samsung, I, I got from Best Buy, but it's a Samsung. It's like officially in the U.S. basically. I'm getting much better standby time and much better battery life. So I'll follow up on that later. But I wanted to point that out. Or speaking about battery life, but everything on this device is great, man. Um, performance, everything is is great. I, I don't have any problems with it. I didn't I didn't anticipate having any problems, and I don't think that I will have any problems with this. If in fact you are a person who was considering the plus, you didn't want to get the small one because you was worried about battery or you just didn't know how it would perform or just whatever, this is your safe bet right here. This is where you need to be right here. These cameras are great. I will be working on a camera review as well. So just stay, stay tuned for that. Um, but I'm here to tell you that 
Don't listen to the people that tell you to ignore something that you might be interested in. Go to the store, you know, go to Best Buy, go to your carrier, play with it, f stay in there and mess with it as long as you possibly can. There's no rules how long you can mess with a device and in the store, if it's a demo unit, just play with it, do what you need to do with it. So test it out. Now, as far as colors go, I went and saw the lavender when I was in Best Buy picking up my Ultra um, the other day, I saw the lavender version of this and you know, the lavender looks good. It just kind of looks pink in certain lighting. So nonetheless, you know, this cream turns out to be the color uh, of, of my choice this year. <laughs> um, is it just because uh, I bought the cream ultra. So, and then I turned in about this, I had a green version of this, but I also saw the green in person. I was like, that's not really green, which is a good thing, I guess. Uh, but let's switch it to cream. So, um, I like this device, man. I am keeping it. I have no reason to get rid of it. It's going to serve me well. So on those days where I don't want to use the Ultra, I'll just pop my SIM card. Now I have a, I'll have, to, I'll have to swap SIM cards. So I got a SIM card in this and I have a SIM card in my Ultra. So I, I would swap SIM cards and make put my primary SIM card in this device and put my secondary in the Ultra. So this is it's going down. It is going down. I'm telling you, this is not one to be ignored. Do not ignore this device. You, you're going to miss out on something that 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 is great. And you're gonna you're gonna hate yourself if you thought about getting this one and you jump to the ultra, thinking, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get so much more out the ultra. By default, the ultra comes set at 1080p, and I didn't even know it. And I used it like that when I was getting all that poor battery life on 1080p. And then about the third day in, I switched it to Quad HD, and then it got worse. So with this one that I bought for the ultra, this one seems to be fine on Quad HD. I don't know what the first uh, one was about, but nonetheless, you don't have to worry about that over here you get a nice dynamic AMOLED display at 120 hertz, and it is beautiful to say the least. So discussion video on the S23 Plus, after a few days or so, this is a major win, and do not ignore this device. See you in the next video. Also, I'll read your comments too. Let's get it.